Okay. We're getting ready to go live here. <laughs> and you can see that it's Andrew's birthday. We'll give some people a chance to sign in. Dancing for your birthday? Mm -hmm. No, it's just the normal B. I know. This We've got is our children's chapel cross here. Went and picked up a couple things to kind of make us together. So we're going to give everybody a chance. <clears throat> we're going to get started. And I did bring our children's chapel bell, so I'm going to ring it to get us ready. We're going to be quiet. Now, I told everybody at Sunday school this morning that I was going to have some very special eggs. And I've got Andrew here. He's going to help me on his birthday with these very special eggs. Ooh, look at all these different colors. I wonder what's inside these eggs. I wonder what they could be. I wonder if there's someone who could help me with these. <laughs> oh. All right. Could that be me? So that would be you. So, Andrew, let's see. Hmm. Let's look. Why don't you open that up for us and tell us what's in that? Can you show everybody? Oh. Show everybody right up there. Look. It's Looks a like a donkey. Well, set that over there and let's see what it is. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. See, Jesus rode in on a donkey today, Palm Sunday, the day that we remember that Holy Week begins, that week before Easter. Jesus rode in like a king on a donkey. Yes, you're Ooh. Ooh. I wonder what that could be. Mm. What do you think that could be? I think it might be a car key because it's down. Well, let's see. Why don't you show everybody? Oh. Remember to show everybody up here. Whoa. Coins. Coins. All right. All right. Why don't you set those right here? Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him thirty pieces of silver. Judas was going to betray his friend Jesus for thirty pieces of silver. He was going to tell the authorities where he was, knowing they were going to arrest him. All right, let's see what's in this one. Ooh. What's in there? Mm. Bouncy. Bouncy, huh? Oh. Wow, show everybody. Looks like a wine glass. Well, that is. It looks like a chalice. <clears throat> a cup. And as they were eating, Jesus mm -hmm. took bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Jesus celebrated one last dinner with his best friends, the disciples. We call it the Last Supper. We also call it Monday Thursday. Right, let's Sounds see what's like in the Monday next Thursday. one. Well, this one doesn't... Have much sound. See what you think. Whoa. Look, guys. It's a hand. <laughs> it's a hand. All right, put it over there. 
he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus went to the garden with some of the disciples and he prayed the night before he was captured. He prayed to God. He was not excited about this journey, but he put it in God's hands because he knew his father knew the right thing to do. Let's see what our next one is. Let's see what that one is. That one doesn't have a lot either. Yeah, why don't you open it up? Can you show everybody? Yeah. <laughs> You're learning what it is too. I got no idea. I know. It looks like a whip, a small whip. May have looked like a worm at first. Well, yeah, it's not a worm, it's a whip. So Pilate wanted to gratify the crowd, and they released Barabbas to them. And he delivered Jesus after he had scorned him to be crucified. Jesus suffered for us greatly. Whipped him. It wasn't a very good thing. You can put those all on the floor. We'll pick them up in a second. It wasn't a nice journey. Let's see what has in that one. All right, show everybody. It's a crown of thorns. Not only did they whip him, they put a crown of thorns on his head. When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They just didn't understand who Jesus was. They didn't understand his love. They mocked him. They put the crown. They whipped him. They didn't treat him very well. Hmm. Let's see what, what that one is. Nice. Let's see what that one is. Whoa. Can All, you a lot show of these everybody? Are metal. Yeah, metal. All right. Looks like a cross, right? Kind of a cross made out of nails. Mm -hmm. Set it up over there. <clears throat> and when they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. <laughs> Just not very nice how they're treating Jesus here. Uh -huh. All right, let's... That's loud. Huh. Let's see what that is. Mm, I'll show like everybody. Metal, metal one. <laughs> oh, not metal. No. Wooden. It's a dice. It is a dice. All right. Now let's set that over there. Then they crucified him, crucified him, and divided his garden garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Not only did they treat him bad. They played games, games like games of chance, like uh, Isla, games of chance where, you know, like they gambled over his clothes. They just didn't understand how much Jesus loved them. It's just not right. All right, so let's see. Try that one out. Let's see what that one is. Whoa. Can you show them? Looks like a spear. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Ching, ching. All right. Do I mean? don't think it's very good because when you hear what happened, all right, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs as was normal. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. Jesus has died. He died on that cross. A hard and horrible death. I'm glad we know that it's a little bit different now. Let's try this one. Number 10. Number 10. It's cloth. Yeah, it's a cloth. Or maybe it may, might stand for clothes. Well, sort of. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb which he had hewn out of the rock. 
And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. See, they wrapped up their friend Jesus in a cloth. They were sad. They thought he had died. I mean, he, they'd seen he died. And they weren't sure what was going to happen next. All right, let's try this one. Let's see what that one is. Wow. Uh, that's a little hefty. Got a little heft that I egg. Whoa. Show everybody. It's a rock. It's a hard rock. All right. Okay. <laughs> Pilate said to them, You have a guard. Go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. So Jesus is in his grave. The rock is rolled up. We think it's all over, right? Yeah. Let's see what happens here. It's all done. <laughs> Wow. Let me see it. It's nothing. Yeah, it is nothing. <laughs> to the human eye. Yeah, to the human eye. All right, now be quiet for a second because this is special. This is what Easter is about. We know on Easter that rock, it's been rolled away and the tomb is open and Jesus has been raised from the dead. All right. God's love was shown in the world. And Jesus showed us that there's life after that. And our sins are washed away. Now, as we see this journey, we know that Jesus went through a lot. There's a lot of sacrifice and a lot of suffering that he went through. Uh, and you kind of think, well, how can that be good news? I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't seem fair that Jesus went through all this sacrifice and this suffering. But I'll tell you, there's something special about sacrifice. Jesus didn't just sacrifice for one person. He sacrificed for everyone, okay? Just kind of like us now. We're sacrificing inside of our homes, uh, social distancing, not beginning to do a lot of different things the way that we normally do them. And we're sacrificing not just for our family, our friends, our neighborhood, the city, the state, the country, the world, we're sacrificing for people that we don't even know, okay? We're sacrificing so everyone can remain healthy. And that's the kind of love that Jesus showed us, an unconditional love. And he suffered too. And we're all suffering right now. A lot of people are suffering a lot. A lot of people have lost their jobs, a lot of people don't have food to eat, money to pay their rent. There are healthcare workers that are suffering because they don't have the supplies they need to treat the people that they care for so much. You know, there, there are people who uh, don't have family around and they're lonely. And, well, gosh, I'm just naming a whole lot of uh, bad things, right? Suffering. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of bad things. How can that be good? Well, suffering is not good, but our response to it is. Okay? Our response to suffering is good. Okay? There are a lot of people who are probably saying right now, how could God let this happen? Okay? And there's a song that I've listened to, and there's a guy in the song, and his line is, God! How can you let this happen? Why don't you do something about it? And the man's, God's response in his prayer is, I did do something about it. I made you. Okay? We are the followers of Christ. We are the love of God in the world now. Through this suffering, I've seen amazing things. People posting things all over the internet of things they're doing nice for people. There are those same people, those healthcare workers, social workers, counselors, okay, who are nervous, they're still going there and helping people even though they're scared. I heard a story of a doctor who was afraid to do surgery because he wasn't sure if the patient had coronavirus or if he had coronavirus because he hadn't been tested. And he was afraid to do the surgery that would save this man's life 
but he prayed and he showed courage and he did it. He did it for someone he didn't even know. The kind of unconditional love that God gives us. I've seen people checking on neighbors who are by themselves to make sure that they don't need anything at the store. I've seen our food pantry packed with people at St. Mark's who get to help others with food. I've seen people volunteer at St. Francis' house to help our homeless veterans. I've seen people stand outside of nursing homes playing guitar for people who are stuck inside. That's the love of Jesus. That is the kingdom here and now. That's where we write the suffering as Christ did. Okay? That's the kingdom now. Now, I love you all just as Jesus loved us. I miss you. And I love this guy. It's his birthday today. You guys wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> and we're going to celebrate him on a Zoom conference. See, we do things differently. Yeah. But the one thing that stays true is always the love. Love God. Thank you, buddy. Love you guys. You guys have a great Palm Sunday and know that if you need any prayers, please put them in the comment section. And uh, if you'd like to find out more about us, you're just joining us today, know that you can leave the comment and we'll get in touch with you. We'll keep you in our prayers. Love you guys. Pray for your peeps. <laughs>